Lost 45 from Billboard's Hot 100, October the 11th, 1969. How you doing? It's Mr. DJ back outsourcing Billboard's Hot 100 for my 60s uh, YouTube channel for one more night. And then I'm going to move on to the 70s for a couple of weeks, and then to the 50s, to sock hop years for a couple of weeks after that, and then swing right back into the 60s again. 1969, the fall of 1969, an instrumental you don't hear anymore. It was a top 40 hit, played a good bit on the radio, then it was forgotten. Kimasabi by the Electric Indian. How cool is that? Another cool 60s sounding band, except the band never existed per se. It was a group of studio musicians assembled by a guy named Bernie Binnick. He was the co-founder of Swan Records, supposedly... Don't quote me on this, but I read that Daryl Hall was a member of this studio band. Kimasabi was put out on United Artists, on the United Artists record label. It went to number six on the easy listening charts. It, it got up to number 16 on Billboard's Hot 100. On Billboard's Hot 100 for 11 weeks, Bernie Binnick, now there was this fascination with American Indians. That's what spawned this record, particularly in the media. This interest, fascination with American Indians, their history, their culture, the mythology. Bernie Binnick, he put together an album of Indian style music. The follow up to Kimasabi was, uh, oh gosh, Land of a Thousand Dances, an Indian version of that. Went to number 95 on Billboard's Hot 100. But if you grew up in the 60s, you probably remember Land of a Thousand Dances, originally done by Chris Kenner in 63, and then a couple of years later, killer version by Cannibal and the Headhunters. Probably my favorite version of that record. But uh, Wilson Pickett had the monster, the signature hit version of that record, Land of a Thousand Dances. But uh, covered later by the Electric Indian got up to number, did I mention the chart position went up to number 95 on Billboard's Hot 100. Now, one other thing I got, gosh, dog it. This album, this record was assembled, it was arranged by a guy named Joseph Tarsia. Tarsia. Joseph Tarsia. Arranged at Sigma Sound Studios in Philadelphia. We, and this is the seminal years of Sigma Sound Studios. Sigma Sound Studios founded in 1968 by Joseph Tarsio, Tarsio rather, the arranger, the engineer. Uh, this Sigma Sound, Sigma Sound Studios will eventually become the foundation of Leon Huff's, Leon Huff's and Kenny Gamble's Sound of Philadelphia in the 70s. A crop of R&B artists who become popular. That slick sound that was infused with lush strings, vocals, just the blue magic, the intruders, three degrees, OJs, the spinners, the spinners recorded at Sigma Sound Studios in the 70s. This studio was so hot. It was so friggin' hot. It ran for 24 hours at one time because it was so much in demand by artists. I want to record at Sigma Sound Studio. I believe the stylistics recorded there too. And a lot of these, the, some of the members who are in the Electric Indian will later become member of the in-house band. Of the Phil of Philadelphia International, which was MFSB, that was mother, father, sisters, and brothers. And well, here it is. Enough said. Electric Indian with Kimasabi.